Hey guys, Doug here again, and it's raining today. I had big plans to do something outside, and I am stuck indoors today because it's pouring out. Last week I was shoveling snow, and uh, yeah, it's raining, and it's actually not even that cold. Uh, do you remember last year when I did uh, this guy? He's the, the, the Viking Christmas tree warrior dude. Another one of my misunderstood videos, but I'll put a link to that video at the end of this video if you care to watch it. But uh, had a lot of fun doing him. He's kind of an angry looking uh, Christmas tree. And then uh, staying with the Christmas theme a year or two ago, I made Sophie this little framed Christmas tree. I kind of uh, winged that one together. But I think it's more like a the Mike Shipley type tree if you follow any of his work. Just that shape. And the reason I'm showing you that is today's project, like all the projects that I do, I want you to put your own take on it and uh, make it big or small or whatever. But this is Larry Green, my favorite carver, has published in Wood Carving 2017 Winter Issue. He's made these little happy tree ornaments and they're, they're super cute. And he's got a little tag on it for uh, hanging in the tree. I'm not going to do that. I'm, I want to set them on the uh, on a shelf. But that's kind of what I roughly came up with. I didn't really follow his instructions. I just kind of winged it. And that's what we're going to do today. But the reason I show you these things are just size doesn't matter in this case. The uh, big or small or skinny just... The idea is uh, just putting a face on the Christmas tree. So that said, uh, we're going to copy like 85% of Larry Green and uh, a little bit of my take, I guess. But credit where it's due, Larry Green's the man. And uh, I got a couple of his books too that he's had published, so he's, uh, he's no newbie. I got a piece of wood here. It's an inch thick. Two and a half inches wide and four inches tall. It's bass wood, as most of my carvings are. And uh, just to keep you confused, I'm going to use a Helvy inch and three quarter detail knife today. All right. So grab a pencil here and uh, let's just get started. So the first thing we're going to do is uh, mark our centers. Okay. So let's just kind of guesstimate center. There we go. Right, we're going to mark that on both sides and right around the top too if you desire. Okay, so there we've got our little uh, center mark. Now let's just come up about, uh, oh I don't know, seven eighths, three quarters from the bottom, okay? And then we will uh, we'll give that a real healthy uh, healthy base on there. We can we can trim that up later but better to be too big than too small. And then just take these lines here and uh we'll just draw the Christmas tree angles. They're a lot funner when you have it swaying one way or the other. And you can do that after a few, but uh, for today we're just going to keep it very symmetrical and, uh, and easy. Now if you want to uh, make this into an ornament, you're best to, uh, to drill a little pilot hole for whatever kind of hook you're going to use now before you're left with just a little point, okay? So if you're going to drill, a, make it a Christmas tree ornament, drill a little pilot hole first and then you got that hole and you won't be trying to drill into a, a little a pointed Christmas tree after. All right, there's our block. If you have a saw at your disposal, go ahead. You can go ahead and just go and uh, cut it like that. But I'm just going to pretend that uh, you don't have a saw, and we'll just do it with the knife. All right, lots of cut. side is much easier. Alright, there's one side done. 
And just for speed's sake, I'm going to pick up with the, the cut one. With our tree cut out here, let's just take our finger and our pencil and give a, a quarter inch line on these sides here. Both sides the same. Oops. So this is where this center mark is going to come in handy too. We've got this here. So all I'm going to do now, I'm going to take that line off and I want to join. I want to join that line to close to the center line. Okay? And I'm going to uh, I'm going to go all the way down first, just as a quarter inch, like so. See that? And then I'm going to come over as close as I can to the line, but I'm going to try and leave that line off, just to kind of give that plane right across to that line. It's basically a quarter inch bevel on the side of that tree. Doesn't have to be perfect, just kind of close to it. And you see how I, I left that line, but it's actually cut on an angle. Alright? The same thing on both sides. Actually, we're going to do the same thing on all four sides. So, and see there, I'm going this way, and I can just see that that's starting to splinter up. So I'm going to turn my knife around, go the other way. There's always one way that works better than the other. You don't want to start tearing. And it's easier to just take this quarter inch off like this first and then fan it out. Exact same thing on the other side, and then I'll come back. So oh, see how we left our our line here? It's just a rough guide. That's all it is. And we've got a little bit of a bad spot in the wood here, so we're going to keep the front on this side. But as you can see, we kind of got this little flat spot left here. Okay. So now we've got this little trunk area, so we can go ahead and work on that just to get it down. So we're just going to add like a little bit of a, a flare in the trunk, makes it sit up better. Spruce trees or most pine trees don't have much of a, a flared trunk like a, like a hardwood, but hey, it's our carving, we can do what we want, right? On the other side. We'll clean this up later again too. We're just going to uh, get everything in proportion. So we've separated the trunk anyway. And we'll round that off and give it some detail later. Or now. That was that. Okay. There we go. So now that we're here, let's just come up maybe a uh, what is that? Say an inch. Kind of going across. Maybe three quarters. Maybe five eighths. Okay? Just roughly. I like to have the bottom bigger, and from there you can do what you want. But I'm only going to uh, just put little, little edge nicks in here. Just to give an idea where it's going to be. Because I want to do the face before I get too carried away with the 
curving in the bows. But it's good to have an idea of where they're going to be. You can stagger each side too. I think Larry's is, is off center too. But like I said, just for now, just to know where the bows are going to be in conjunction with our face, we'll just mark it like that. So there's no rhyme or reason for this. Like I said, probably roughly an inch, maybe seven eighths, maybe three quarters, half inch. Okay. We can take a little bit off the edge, we don't want to point. Alright. Now when I'm looking at these bows, I've got these marked here, across here. So if I drew a line across like that, like I had, I want that the top of the eye is just to, to be able to arch around like so. Okay, so if we give that, that much eye space, Okay, then we'll give a good uh, give a good three eighths or so, and now we're just going to uh, this will be the nose, but on this we're just going to just kind of mark the nose area. See that? Okay. So from that top, we can kind of flatten this down a little bit. We are going to bring those bows in so we don't have as much room as it appears, but okay, so that's the top there. We'll just kind of flatten that out. And this, this here, we can go right now and just cut that back both sides even make it more of a point okay and then underneath the nose here we're just going to kind of slice up here and we're going to flatten that out a bit too all right keeping it all fairly even all right let's mark our Mark our nose. Always start bigger. And always kind of keep it centered. In fact, I'm even going to take my V tool now and just mark it so we don't cut too deep because I'm going to make up. I'm going to end up with that nose being round. So we use the V tool. It works just to uh, to give a ballpark where that is. So now I'm going to take the corners off. Similar eyes as Larry, kind of like our, our pumpkin guy. Okay, split them in half. So. And 
and then we'll just kind of come off the sides like that. Okay. Something like that. So we'll start down here. I'm just going to dig in, trying to keep both sides the same. That's relatively close. Okay, we'll leave that for a minute and we'll go over to the uh, eyes. Clean off all my pencil lines. I'm going to redraw the eyeballs after I get that nose deepened just a little bit. Just to get that nose a little more depth. There we go. Come on. There we go. All right. Okay, let's redraw these eyeballs. I wasn't happy with them. Let's start up here. Come over. Okay, let's focus on that first, okay? Let's dig right in. And down. A little stab here to the nose. Okay. Take that center line. Cut that out. There it is. A little off center, but Okay, we'll take this down a little bit deeper. Okay, now we're going to give them the eyelids. We're just going to give them straight across like that. Okay. Pretty straightforward. Come up underneath. A little stop cut. Come up underneath. Alright. I'm just going to round that eye a little bit. Not too much. Just take off all those little sharp edges. Bring it down to the nose. Back cut on here. And all the way around. Just removing that pencil line and giving a little bit of a bevel. Okay, that's where we're at. One more 
thing. We'll just kind of really deepen these cuts. I like that really sunken in. Come on. bit deeper under there. All right, that's where we're at. So now you can see the distance that we left. So now we can even go in and cut that and just kind of flare those up even more. Not too much here, but to the front. Take the cut lines off. A little bit of a swooping cut here. I'll show you the bottom one here. That's flat there. See what's flat there. Now we just kind of put a little stop cut here. And just kind of take that corner and just swoop it up into it. And that gives you that nice little edge. Okay. Might do the same thing on this side while we're at it. And that's what I meant by uh, putting a hook in the top. You, you'll have a heck of a time drilling that. So if you pre-drill it, you're a lot better better off. Okay. Off. We don't want too big of a, a lip on there. Okay. There. Now we can take that. I'm just going to swipe it. Curling it up just a little bit to the nose. If you got a gouge, we can put a little snot trough running up. Let's do that. Like a little little snot trough here. What have we got here? Take a little. Is that number six or is that number nine? I don't know, but we're just going to stick it in here. And run it up to the nose. Okay. 
it's always good to get these little undercuts and it gets a real distinct shadow of a line in there so even the nose now has a, a real shadow just like these little edges all right now let's take that little corner of the of the mouth here We did there. I'm just gonna put a little cut this way and this way. We're just gonna take that little corner out. There, does that look better? Can you, can you notice that? How that's missing? I like that. I like it. I don't like these pointy edges though. Let's just smooth off that edge. He's starting to look like something. All right. Okay, that's where we're at. Let's take this sharp edge off the bottom here. All around. We don't like points sticking out or sharp edges. I cut that uh, pencil mark out and give the tree some more shape. The more facets now that you have, the more the paint will show it. Edges. We can just okay. Okay. Back to the trunk. I'm gonna keep. I want to keep the uh, the base a little bit thicker. More of a platform to stand on. Like I said, I'm well aware that. Most spruce and pines don't have much of a, a swelled base like like a hardwood tree, but we can do whatever we want because we're the creator, right? add some uh, texture with the v-tool we've got most of our uh, our guy done here but we want to take the uh, the v-tool and let's just add some some bark to start with on the base do some high do some low just giving some texture for the bark. Alright. No rhyme or reason to this, just putting some little little cuts in there. And then anytime we see a big space, we can just kind of give a little a little swipe with the V tool. Especially you can get a little bit extra a few little cuts. See what we're doing there? Yeah. 
It's just giving the illusion. You don't have to try and fake every every bow. Okay. Gives them a little little eyebrow here, so we can do that with our V tool just by say go an eighth eighth inch above the eyes there. Just a little little sweep on the eye. You see that? Just a little little sweep over the eye. Okay, and we'll kind of cut down into it. Too much. Okay, you can see the little little edge around the top of the eye, and then we'll just split it, same as the the eyeball, the eyelids. A little bit, a little V cut to split the eyebrows. All right. Then we'll just kind of round them over a little bit. Oops. See that? No eyebrows. Now we'll just put some little little cuts. If you got a tiny if you got a tiny little uh, V tool you can do it that way too. But it's probably safer for me with a knife. We're gonna paint them the same color as the whole tree, so it's just having them in place. They're not going to be painted a different color and stand out. All right. Okay, well, I might just go over this quickly, take out any little little imperfections. That's what you always want to do, eh? Before you you paint, you just kind of go around and recut some of the cuts that are a little bit rough. Just look it all over. But I think we're in we're in pretty good shape. This V cut here is a little rip, so I'll clean that up. I'll do that, and uh, I'll get out the paint stuff, and we'll start painting. Okay, we're back with the paint all set up. There's our little guy. I, I wet him up. Uh, People always ask me why I wet them, and I stole that trick from uh, Gene Messer. Gene Messer videos are fantastic if you want to see some more carving. Uh, but I wet them. Just it, it highlights all the uh, the shadows, and uh, it just helps you see the detail a lot better. I uploaded some clips from uh, the carving already, and uh, it really. Someone tell me what to do with these lights because I don't, or my camera for that matter, I don't understand why I get that white washed out look. I'm going to have to get a, a, put a filter on my camera or something so we don't get that washed out look. So apologies for that, but I'm a dummy with this camera and, uh, well, life in general. But, uh, yeah, we gotta, we got to fix that. But there's our guy ready for paint. And, uh, like I said, I uploaded some clips but 
I should address this. This is not fingernail polish. I smashed that probably a month ago. We've got lots of comments in past videos. But uh, yeah, uh, steel door frames and steel doors don't, uh, you can't stop with your finger. So, And what else was I going to say? One more thing. Let's address the monkey in the room. This guy. Old buddy Scrambled O's back back in the game after uh, eight months off so uh, if you remember Scrambled O and you like his outdoor videos go back and check him out because he's back with a couple new videos and uh, hopefully he'll stick around for a while so anyway let's paint this guy this guy here I'm not going to uh, antique him so I'm just going to use this uh, what do you call this this is clover green and I'm going to uh, I'm going to wet this down a fair bit. We're going to do a paint wash. I've talked about it lots of times, but the antiquing usually takes away from it. So I'm going to get some paint in here and add some, some water. Mix it all up good. And we're going to do a wash. Basically it's a paint stain. And uh, that way you can kind of kind of transparent. So we'll just let it just soak right in there. And it, uh, I like the look of it. I'm going over absolutely everything on this. And uh, I'll paint the eyes in after. You can really see the, uh, I'll show you this, you can see that uh, that dark streak on there. Like I said, it's, it's a, more like a stain than a, a paint. I really like it. I'm always torn with my, my uh, carvings. The antiquing, if I were to antique this, I would just take away all of the, uh, the little, the uh, little, whatever you call it, all the little details of the grain and the wood by antiquing it and that wash would really be for nothing. And that's why I've been painting them solid because the antiquing highlights on solid paint but it really kind of ruins the paint wash. Hello train. What a fun, fun, easy project. It's even easy to paint. That's basically it. So while I wait for that to dry, or I'll take the hair dryer to it anyway after, but I'm going to be sneaky and I'm going to go ahead and paint this guy at the same time. So I'll return and we'll paint up the trunk and the eyes. There's our guy. And you see how you can, it's transparent, you can, you can see right through. I like it. So I'm going to put some white in the eyes and then do the trunk and the white while the white dries. So. Let's do that real quick. Let's uh, put some white on the eyes. Oh, it's pretty quiet. Doug's not talking. Focusing. I've got one eyeball here I can see is not exactly the same as the other side. Perhaps if I didn't say it out loud you wouldn't notice, but 
I don't care. <laughs> We're all learning together. Stayed in the lines. All right, so there's the white, white done. I'm gonna do my other guy here, and then uh, we'll do the trunk. You can see the paint ran down the trunk a little bit. It's no big deal. If uh, you get sloppy, just carve it off. It doesn't affect your your carving in any way. And with it being transparent like this. It will probably show through. So just take a minute and if you got any little snouts or goobers, just, just trim them off. Okay, okay. we're gonna do some brown in the same same fashion as the uh, finger as the uh, the green, and we're just going to uh, get some paint in here and add a little bit of water to it. These paintbrushes are nothing special. I've had questions in the past about that. that what kind are they? And they don't really uh, say a name. I just get them at uh, Michael's Craft Store. There's no no reason for it other than I really like the uh, little pencil pencil grip they give you. I don't know anything about paintbrushes, so I shouldn't even talk. But I get asked, so. I'll tell you. And we're just putting the brown on the base here. The uh, you can hear the wind outside just whipping. Strange weather this week. Like I said last week we had our first snowstorm. And uh, today it's windy and, and rainy. I went to a winter camping symposium on the weekend. And that was a good time too. Got it all, all excited for some winter camping. That's all it is. Alright. Now for the eyeballs, we're going to do this in three steps. So I'm going to take this baby blue, you can pick whatever color you want. And I'm just going to make a little... Oops. A little bit of an eyeball. This guy's going to be looking off to the side. We'll make it a little bit bigger than you think because I'm going to be putting a black, half of it's going to be covered by black again. So a little bit bigger than you think it should be because we're going to put black on it. Alright. Okay, you see that? I got them looking, looking a little bit down. Let that dry, and we're gonna put a big black dot there, and then maybe even outline the uh, the eyeball. All right, there we go. Now we'll just take some black paint. And just a little dab over in there.
There. See that? Okay. All we need is a, a one-way dot when that's gray. Okay, there's our fellow there. So our little final step here is take our little stylus. I'm just going to put one little dot in the eyeball there. That's heavy. Look at that, he just came, came to life with that little white dot. Right. Okay, here's our little guy. I think he turned out really cute. He is, uh, he was easy, very fun, fun little easy project. So give her a try, make it your own. If you go to wood carving on Instagram, that's Larry Green's page, you'll notice that his trees have little curves and, and his eyes look this way and the body goes this way and he's a, he's a real pro of these guys. And uh, so go check him out on Instagram. Well, this is our little guy one more time. And he'll go up here somewhere on the shelf and I will catch you on the next one. Thanks for watching. See ya.